All right, guys, welcome back to another Race Shadow Legends video. This is Ali Plays, and today we're going to be doing an in depth guy slash review Skull Crusher. So, yeah, I have Skull Crusher. I got him, I got lucky to get him from an ancient shard. I already have Martyr, uh, but yeah, that's okay. <laughs> so, as always, we're going to be going over skills, artifacts, and masteries. We're going to review the champion, and we're going to we can't, I don't know if we can test drive him. We'll try to test drive him in Clan Boss. I will show you guys a screenshot of how much damage I did running a double counter team, uh, which is which was pretty crazy. Well, it was only good because of the affinity, because it was spirit affinity. So I had the clan boss target skull crusher. And then when he stunned him, once he gets his turn, he just cleanses it and keeps going. Yeah, it was crazy. All right, so let's get started. So skull crusher is an epic defense based champion. He's part of the Ogren tribes and he is a force affinity. So he is one of three champions in the game that have a counter attack on their ability. And what makes his counter attack unique is that he also places ally protection on all allies except for himself for two turns. And then he plays a counter attack buff on all of them. And he plays an unkillable buff on himself for one turn. So that is his best ability. This is what makes um, Skull Crusher really good. The other two champions that have counter attack are legendaries, that's Martyr and Valkyrie. So he is top tier in terms of epic champions. So his first ability, Smash, he attacks one enemy and places a 50% heal reduction debuff that targets defense lower than this champions. So this ability is only good for Arena, because heal reduction can help against uh, the ra Rain Beasts in Arena. <laughs> and his passive ability is very good. He decreases the duration of all debuffs on himself by one turn at the start of each turn. So as I said, when the clan boss stunned him, so I used him as bait, he just uh, cleansed it and then kept going. And his aura skill is a new one, increased ally resist and faction crisp by 45, which is very good against that um, stage seven boss because he has fear, so he can increase the resistance towards that. So overall, he has a very, very good kit. Stonewall and Unshakable are very, very good abilities. So I'm running a lifesteal and speed build. So this build is primarily for clan boss, uh, which is very good because he can uh, recover his own health. So he's a de defense-based champion, so we're going to need to make him very durable. So the stop stats we're going to be looking for, for Skull Crusher, we're going to be looking for speed. We're looking for HP percentage, defense percentage. Uh, let's do an order. So we're looking for speed, primarily, number one. Defense percentage, HP percentage. And yeah, that's about it. You just need these three stats. He does need a resistance because... He has um, Unshakable as his passive ability. So speed, HP, defense percentage, and HP percentage. So let's look at my sets right here. I have a, um, I need to get a better weapon for sure. So when I get that, I will change that out. So we got 12% defense here, 9% HP. And we got 20% HP, which is very good, and five speed. And for the primary on the gloves, we went with defense percentage. So we got 50% defense from here. And for the chest, I went with defense percentage. If you want, you can also go for HP percentage to make it more durable. We have nine speed here. We got, that's about it that we got from here. And then for the boots, we want speed. So we got 40 speed from here and we got a lot of attack, but we don't need attack and we got 11% defense. So let's look at the accessories now. So for the ring, I have 15% defense here. So what you're looking for, for the ring, don't worry about the primary stat. Just worry about the, the uh, secondaries. So try to get some defense and HP percentage on your ring and then roll that and hopefully you can land on it, on one of them. For the amulet, so I'm with HP as a primary. You can also go for defense. He doesn't really benefit as much from the necklace as other champions. So for the banner, I have attack, but he is defense based. But I'm just, I was just looking at this defense percentage and this HP percentage. So we got 13% here and we got 5% and then he, I added the glyphs on there. So let's look at the total stats. You got 36,910 HP. I would prefer if that was 40,000. And for the defense, I would prefer if that was 4,000 as well. Speed's 170, that's okay. Yeah, if you wanna run him in clan boss, um, the higher modes, you're gonna need 200 speed. And make sure your other champions are faster than him. So that's about it, that's all the stats that he needs. He doesn't need a lot of stats. So he is quite easy to build. And let's go ahead and review Skull Crusher. So for defense, I'll give him a 5. He is very annoying to fight um, in Arena. Clan Boss is a 5 as well. 
he is very good in the clan boss. Offense, five. Fire Knight's Castle. So the reason why he is a five in Fire Knight's Castle, he doesn't have any multi-hits, but his counter-attack will allow your allies to attack and take down the shield much faster. Ice Golem's Peak, I'll give him a five. Minotaur's Labyrinth, he's a five. So Spider's Den, he's rated kind of low. I mean, there's a lot of uh, strategies that use Skull Crusher and Spider because of his counter attack. So they use a AOE tank, like Infernal Baroness, and then they make her keep countering the spiders and they keep going after her, countering and healing herself. So just for that strat, I'd give him a very good for Spider's Den. Dragon's Larry is a five. Campaign, he if you're early game and you po manage to pull Skull Crusher, congratulations, but <laughs> he's not a campaign farmer, but he can help you clear campaign, so I'll give him a four. Force keep five, Spirit keep five. He's not there for the damage, he's there for utility. So he's gonna need a five on all of those. So overall, he's very, very good. Uh, this recommended artifacts is from Plarium, mostly in Arena. They're running four defense and two life. I would say that is okay, but you're gonna need to be faster because some enemies, uh, some teams can wipe him before he even gets a turn. So I wouldn't follow that build. So now we submitted the ratings, let's go look at his masteries. So I went through the offense and support tree because I primarily use Skull Crusher and Clan Boss. So I got crit right here, crit damage, life drinker. You can recover some HP. Heals by 5% of the damage inflicted when attacking with 50% HP or less, which combines very well with his uh, lifesteal set. We have Heart of Glory, increased damage inflicted by 5% when attacking with full HP because he has lifesteal set, so I mean, most of the time he's gonna have full HP. Bring it down, increase damage fleet by 6% when tagging targets higher max HP. So the clan boss has a maths of health pool, that is why we're using that. Methodical, increase damage fleet by this champion's default skill by 2% each time it's used during battle. And stats across each round of the battle up to 10%, so that is very good. And we went through that path so we can reach Warmaster. So he has a single attack. That's not a multi-hit, it's a single hit. So it's a 60% chance to deal bonus damage based on 4% of the bosses max HP and 10% for other champions. And we also went through the support tree. So we got max HP plus 810 from the support tree. And we got um, exalt and death heals a champion by 10% of their max HP the first time an enemy is killed in each round. So that is very good for arena as well as dungeons and fashion crypts. Arcane celerity. celerity. Uh, he, can, he has a 30% chance of increasing turn meter by 10% when a debuff cast by him is removed or expires. So he does have heal reduction. I think it's a 50% chance. So when that expires, he has a chance to get 30% chance to gain 10% turn meter. Rapid response. He has a 30% chance of increasing the turn meter by 10% when a buff cast by this champion is removed or expires. So what kind of buffs does he place? He places counter attack and ally protection on all his allies. So he has a high chance to gain a lot of turn meter there. And we got Lore of Steel. So the only basic artifacts we are using is speed. Cycle of Magic has a 5% chance of decreasing the cooldown of a random skill by one turn at the start of every turn. And Lasting Gifts, he has a 30% chance, 30 chance to extend the duration of any buff cast by this champion by one turn. It will not increase his unkillable, but it will increase his ally protection and counter. Spirit Haze is what I use as well. Increases speed by 8 for each dead ally. Stacks up to 24. So that's it for the masteries. Let's go back to artifacts. There's also another way you can build Skull Crusher. You can run him with Reflex Set. So what Reflex Set does. Okay, so Reflex Set is right here. So it has a 30% chance to reduce a random school, skill cooldown. So 30% chance is a pretty high chance. So because he only has two abilities and only one of them has a cooldown on it, uh, he has a very good chance of decreasing that cooldown every time he takes a turn, a 30% chance because his other ability is a passive. So Reflex Set is very good on him. I would run him with Reflex and Speed, Reflex and Defense, things like that. I'm gonna fight this team. So this looks like a bomb team. There he is, Skull Crusher. So we're probably gonna do one or two battles so we don't make this video too long, even though it's supposed to be in-depth guy slash reviews. <laughs> All right. See, they have a bomb team, but they don't have the best bomb guy. That's Lord Shazar. Okay, let's do the ally protection encounter. Ooh, Skull Crown. So he is very, very good with Skull Crown. Because she does a lot of damage. And she can counter. And she has an AoE. 
All right, so let's try this team, this Rosin team. Rosin Lee teams are surprisingly good in, in arena because of the resistance. It's a good strategy. See, let's see how much. See, I missed one um, of my debuffs on Seeker. Yep, missed one again. All right, Skull Crusher's turn. So what his ally protection does uh, when it's active is that when they attack the ally, his allies, he takes some of the damage from them. So he helps mitigate the damage. So it was like Jarek's ability. Oh, we got three guys in s that are sleeping. Sleeping on the job, eh? See that? His passive ability activated, so he's <laughs> so he's not asleep anymore. Right when he gets his turn. That's one thing that's underrated about Skull Crusher is that his passive ability is very very good. Let's get heal reduction. Yeah, so when he builds Skull Crusher, if you want to build him, um, not for Fire Knight. I know he has heal reduction. He's good for Fire Knight. But if you want to build them for clan boss, you shouldn't build accuracy because you don't want the heal reduction to take a debuff slot. Because you're only allowed nine, uh, 10 debuffs on the clan boss, and then if it's heal reduction takes a spot, uh, that's not very good. But for fire knight, you're gonna need some accuracy because you want to uh, apply heal reduction on him. So I guess the best way to do that is switching uh, banners. So you should have one banner for him that is accuracy and one banner that is uh, something else. That is the cheapest way I think to do it. <laughs> okay, so that was two battles. Let's go ahead and do clan boss. So clan boss, Nightmare is already down, so we're gonna be running him in brutal. So the strategy, I'm gonna post the picture right there. So that strategy was using a double counter with Martyr and it was around 20 million damage. So the reason why that strat works is because the clan boss was spirit, so he kept targeting Skull Crusher, and every time he stunned him, Skull Crusher just passively cleansed it, so it was very good. So that's why I'm running it without Martyr. Ooh, Martyr's not my team. So we're gonna run him as lead, even though he doesn't have an aura skill for this team, because we want the clan boss to target him. Apparently, people have a theory that if you run a champion in the lead spot, the clan boss targets them more often. Let's test it out. So generally, you don't, when you're running a counter team, you don't want a speed booster like Apothecary, but my team is too slow, so you're gonna need 200 speed minimum. Your slowest guy should be 200 speed if you wanna run a counter attack team. And everybody else should be uh, faster than him. The reason that is, is because if he is faster than them, he's gonna be applying his counter on everybody in the beginning, and then they get a turn, and that's a waste of one uh, counter turn. Okay, so we're gonna run counterattack now. So the reason why I am not running Skull Crusher with a Reflex set is because I tend to use him with Martyr, so I don't need his um, counter attack to be uh, off of cooldown that often. So he can afford to wait. Okay, uh, when the Clan Boss gets his turn, that's if he targets Skull Crusher. Even though he has Void Affinity right now.
Nope, he went after Juliana. <laughs> yeah, some people are like, oh, why are you not running fully as lead? I'd rather have Martyrs, her aura skills, like boost a lot of defense. I think it was like 33% in old battles. I think that is much better than taking a stun away um, from a theory, right? Okay, don't run speed up boost. Yeah, like for me, I'm not the best in clan boss because of uh, stats, things like that. And sometimes I don't do things uh, correctly, but I won't say I am bad in clan boss. It's just like really expensive trying to build your team and it takes a lot of time. You need luck, you need silver. Um, you need to have the champions. So I, I have the champions, but now my issue is uh, artifacts. So the good thing about Skull Crusher is he scales on defense. So if I have a defense up, he's going to be doing more damage. So that was 21,000 damage on his basic attack. So yeah, this guy's just hitting random things, man. So I'll do this for one another minute and then I will fast forward to before the fight is over. So this video doesn't go on too long and it's not too boring for you guys. Yeah, he's not going after Skull Crusher. Okay, fast forwarding now. 11 minutes later. All right, so my guys died <laughs> um, 12 minutes in. So it was a 12 minute run. Uh, we got 15.56 damage dealt. And yeah, that's not bad, I guess. We got 3.5 mil from Rosin, 1.4 mil from Skull Crusher, 5.8 from Juliana. Uh, 2.1 mil from Jarek and 2.4 mil from Apothecary. That's like a faction Crips. Is he there? Nope. So we can't showcase him in faction Crips because it is currently Sacred Order and Banner Lords. But you guys can see that he's going to be very good for faction Crips. So yeah, that's it for the video. I would give Skull Crusher. Honestly, I'd give him a 10 out of 10 because he's one of three champions that have counterattack. I always have to make that point because it's a very, very um, good point because of how broken it can be, uh, especially a AOE counterattack. So yeah, guys, that's it for the video. If you guys found this video helpful or entertaining in any way, make sure you guys drop a like. And if you guys are new to the channel and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button. Turn on notifications so you can let YouTube know that you want to stay up to date on all my latest content. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.